Campbell, director of the Barry Center for the Arts. Welcome to our new virtual series, Bringing Home Barry. Today, my guest is Ramapo music professor and professional musician and composer, Ben Neal. We'll be discussing his fascinating work with the mutant trumpet and his recent project, Fantini Futuro, which had its New Jersey premiere earlier this year at our center. Welcome, Ben. Hi, thanks a lot for having me. Great to be here. So at the beginning of our opening here, you got to see our audience saw a little snippet of your work from Fantini Futuro. And I'm curious why, you know, what the impetus was behind that project and really why you took a historical figure and used it with such contemporary technology in your work. In terms of this particular piece, I was looking for a model that would reflect what I'm trying to do with the mutant trumpet, which my artistic project for three decades has been to develop a new instrument that integrates electronics, very sophisticated interactivity, computer, uh, computer music with the acoustic instrument. And so I looked at Fantini as a kind of model for that because of the fact that Fantini was the first person who is known to have performed the trumpet indoors. Until Fantini, the trumpet was an outdoor instrument only. It was used in battle, it was used for the hunt and different kinds of pageantry. Uh, but Fantini wrote one of the very first method books for trumpet in 1638. And as I say, he was known to be the first person to do an indoor concert with the trumpet, uh, which is a, was a really transformational, revolutionary kind of an event. He was a musical celebrity in his time. He, he, he was uh, very well known, very recognized as being an innovator. And so in this tradition of sampling, where we try to express ourselves through someone else's work. I just got very interested in using him as a model for my own development and trying to mirror what I've tried to do in terms of bringing the trumpet into the virtual world. Whereas he was bringing it from outdoors to indoors, I've tried to bring it from the physical world into the virtual. How did you come to combine music and, and your instrument specifically with technology? I mean, what experiences pushed you in that direction? So as I mentioned, I was trained as a classical trumpet player, but I always had a strong interest in a lot of different kinds of music, particularly popular music. I was uh, very much enamored of David Bowie, Brian Eno, uh, the jazz fusion of Miles Davis, and so as I became uh, more accomplished as a trumpet player and started looking at a career as a, a, an orchestral musician, I was taking some orchestra auditions and whatnot and did make the finals on the first couple that I took. But I, I started to get more and more interested in creating my own music, being a composer. And uh, I was lucky enough to have a teacher where I was going to school in Ohio Isato Pellegrini, who really encouraged me in that direction. I was starting to play all this contemporary music, and you know, he would say to me in my lessons, well, you know, I think you should really try to write music like that. So I, I had the idea, but, but where I really got started with it was at the same time that I was in school there uh, in Northeast Ohio, uh, the, the punk new wave scene was really blowing up there. Uh, Devo, uh, Perry Ubu, The Pretenders, there was a really active scene of clubs and bands that were doing all kinds of experimental things, but in a popular music context. And that was really the first way that I started to use the mutant trumpet, to develop the mutant trumpet, and to create my own music. I always wanted it to be integrated with electronics. And around this time, I was experimenting with putting multiple bells on the trumpet and a, and a trombone slide. I had a friend that I was playing with who was a, a brass instrument maker. He had worked at the King Instrument Factory. So he helped me to construct the first one, which was a really pathetic looking thing that I used to carry around in a laundry bag. Uh, so, you know, like many of these experiments, it started out as almost like a joke. 
but we started refining it more and then I happened to see an ad in the back of Keyboard Magazine that Robert Moog, the synthesizer inventor, was looking for uh, individual specialized projects. So I contacted him and he became extremely interested in my idea, gave me great support. He built a custom electronic system for me. And I started working with a lot of other composers and musicians who were doing things with live electronics, computer music, and that sort of thing. And then uh, by the end of the 1980s, it had become really you know, pretty much my complete focus. This is the Mutant Trumpet version 4, created over the last several years with a team of instrument makers, technicians, and programmers in the Netherlands, Australia, and New York City. I've been developing the Mutant Trumpet as the primary vehicle for my work as a composer-performer since the 1980s. You can see it has three bells instead of the normal single bell, which I'm able to switch between with this extra set of valves, creating multi-tambral effects. A glissando is also possible with the help of a mini trombone slide and a piccolo trumpet bell. A quarter tone valve enables me to play quarter tones. Since the early 90s, I have been an artist in residence at an electronic music studio in Amsterdam called Stime, the studio for electro-instrumental music. And Stime is a really amazing place that is strictly dedicated to the development of new live performance music technologies, music and interactive video. So I had developed the last version with them uh, in 2006, but as we all know, what happens with technology is over the course of eight, 10 years, it becomes obsolete. So the, the, the board, the, the, uh, the circuitry that's built into the instrument uh, was getting to the point to where it wouldn't work with uh, any of the newer computers and software, so I needed to update it. In this instance, I wanted to really have a, a, an instrument built from scratch. So I went to Hub van Leyer, who is a, a Dutch brass, like boutique brass instrument maker, and he created it. He custom built it for me from scratch. And then I added uh, an updated circuitry with some expanded capabilities at Stime. The Mutant Trumpet has 32 onboard electronic controllers, switches, knobs, a fader, XY joysticks up here, and a distance sensor. There's a pickup in the mouthpiece, which takes the acoustic sound, sends it to the computer, and makes it available for digital processing and triggering. A microphone amplifies and captures the acoustic sound for live sampling and processing. When I press this switch, it samples my sound into a buffer for a predetermined number of seconds. Now when I start to play other notes, I'll trigger that sound back. I can start to manipulate it, changing the pitch using this joystick. The joystick is tuned to the overtone series to reflect the harmonic structure of the trumpet. I can add other notes, and then create all kinds of other effects, such as granular processing. When I press another switch on the trumpet, I can have the computer play back what I just played. Now I'll make another sample.
So what was the development of this piece like for you? Uh, what kind of challenges did you face trying to put Fantini Futura together? The Fantini piece, in addition to being a, an artwork that I wanted to make, it was a vehicle for me to develop this, this instrument. Uh, and so it was, there was a lot of trial and error. My first notes for the piece uh, actually went back as far as 2012. Um, and that was around the time that I started sketching out uh, the ideas for the new trumpet. And then around 2014, that was when I really started putting together the instrument and getting more, more serious about it. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to have in the piece was a multimedia component. One of the things that I really enjoy, I always have, is working with visual artists, uh, collaborating and, and utilizing visual imagery and, and specifically uh, actually manipulating visual imagery in my performances. For this, I thought, well, I think the, the logical thing to do, since this piece is, is really a kind of profiling, biographical sort of thing about Fantini, uh, I went to all of the places where he lived, performed, uh, took extensive photography, video, not really sure what I was going to do with it all. Uh, but again, it was just like a lot of trial and error, just collecting all this material and, and figuring, you know, eventually I would come up with uh, some way, hopefully, to use it all. And the other thing then was to figure out how to perform it. Uh, one of the things about Fantini's music and all of the music of this early Baroque period is that it's extremely simple uh, and there's a lot of improvisation in the performance practice. It, it's when you look at Fantini's music, basically what you see, well, his his most famous opus, which my piece is really built around, the first half of it is just for trumpet alone. That's the outdoor part. He literally labeled the two sections, the outdoor and the indoor. And then the second half is comprised of the pieces that he wrote for trumpet and keyboard. But all those pieces are is one simple melody line and one bass line. In the tradition of Baroque performance, the keyboardist would improvise and fill in all the chords. So I wanted to, to maintain or kind of mirror that looseness and improvisatory quality of Baroque music with this new technology. It took about five years, really, to pull the whole thing together into a, a form that I felt like was, was really solid. The electronic controllers are mapped to control video as well as audio. In this example, the length of the live audio samples and the number of flags in the video are controlled by the same two knobs, one here and one over on this side. So I'll play a short phrase. That phrase will be sampled. And then as I start changing the length and the repetition of the notes in that phrase, you'll see the flags multiply in a similar ratio. You know, that's a great uh, segue to my next question. So how, how would you describe this sound that you have created? So one of my favorite quotes that's been written about me, probably the, my most favorite quote, was from a 1997 article in Wired magazine where the writer said, Ben Neal is using a schizophrenic trumpet to create art music for the people. And... That's always been my goal, was to make music that was interesting and had uh, some advanced ideas, but that was also accessible. 
Uh, as I mentioned, I had gotten into doing my own music somewhat as a reaction against classical music. I, I didn't want to just have a whole life in classical music. Uh, minimalism uh, was very influential on me. I had a real natural inclination toward minimal, repetitive music, groove-based music. Um, and when I came to New York, I started to, again, being in part of that downtown scene where that was going on, uh, was was very influential on me. I've always tried to bring different things together. One of the ways that I talk about what I do is in terms of hybrids. Uh, the mutant trumpet itself, when you look at it, it's this kind of hybrid with all these different things stuck together in, in a, a, a new way. And I think, you know, compositionally, I've tended to, to try and do that as well. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's always groove-based on some level. Uh, my music tends to be rather tonal, again, in a minimalist kind of uh, sense. I'm not a free player so much. I, I, I never really embraced the whole free improvisational thing. Um, I'm, I'm more of a minimalist, and uh, but again, this kind of idea of also sampling or Re remixing, reset, recycling classical music uh, is something that has been also a recurrent theme in what I'm doing. I'm, I'm curious about your creative process with this piece. And can you also tell us a little bit about how you came to work with the artists Gwendolyn Toth and Ryland Angel on the project? For me, the greatest delight of the creative process is when I'll, I'm able to set some kind of process in motion using my instrument and different software and different technologies and that to create something that comes back and surprises me and particularly when those results are expressive that's that's what i find to be uh again the kind of delightful thing of working with all this technology so it's not just like oh i heard a melody in my head uh, let me write that down and put some chords to it. it it's putting something into, into play, uh, and, and that's the exciting thing, I think, about working with interactivity. And we see this happening now more and more in terms of artificial intelligence that is built into a lot of the newer commercial software and, and that kind of thing. I'm much more involved with uh, a practice of discovery and seeking things out. And just like I talked about with the Fantini piece, I might have to experiment and improvise and try different things in my studio for, you know, months, you know, and then finally, oh yeah, then finally hit on something that, yeah, that's really exciting, that's great. And then once I get that going, then I get into the process of refining the surfaces, tailoring whatever the musical material is for the context that I'm trying to create. But, but that, that, whole ex, that whole kind of experimenting, trying to discover something is, is really, that's it, at the crux of, uh, of, of my creative process. Okay, so, so Fantini's uh, opus, which Fantini Futuro is based on, is titled Method for Learning to Play the Trumpet in a Warlike Way as well as musically with the organ, with a mute, with a harpsichord, and with every other instrument. <laughs> That's the title. The first half is just for trumpet, but then the second half I mentioned is for trumpet with keyboards, and historical research has shown that those pieces were performed either with organ or harpsichord. So I was always thinking that I would need to have a keyboardist. Gwen and I had actually toured together in Europe quite a bit in the late 80s and done a lot of performing together of contemporary music. Uh, and she is one of these musicians who did contemporary music and early music. When I was putting this piece together early on, I immediately thought of her because we had had a, a great relationship and I knew she was somebody that would understand and could appreciate the contemporary aspect of what I'm doing while at the same time bringing that real authentic kind of quality to it. 
Uh, so I approached her about it and you know, she was very receptive to the idea. Um, and she has her own ensemble, early music ensemble called Artec that's very active in New York. And then the other thing I wanted to add to the piece was a vocal component. Now Fantini didn't write any vocal music, but in the opus that I just mentioned, there were four poems uh, that were written in tribute to him. So I thought it would be nice to use those poems as texts. So I started setting those and I, was, I thought about the Baroque countertenor, uh, the male soprano voice, that that would be another thing that would bring that kind of period quality to it. Um, and so she suggested Ryland, who is someone that she works with in her ensemble a lot, and Ryland turned out to be absolutely perfect as well because he also had done a lot of contemporary music. He had some popular music recordings that have been done on major labels. He's worked with Hans Zimmer on films. I mean, he, he's somebody who's very, very flexible. I would, I, and, and like Gwen, does a lot of early music, but also a lot of very contemporary music. And I'm just very grateful to both of them because they, what they both brought to it, I would have, if I would have had to try to really just teach someone to do exactly what I wanted them to do, I don't think I would have ever been able to do it. They brought their own experience and, and their own practices as improvisers and creators into the piece. And, and that really, that's when it really came to life. When audiences get a chance to see Fantini Futuro, I'm curious, um, you know, what do you want them to experience? Um, do you think, I'm, I'm, I'm curious too, do you think that some of your audience comes in and they've never seen anything quite like this before? I always wanted the piece to have a kind of fantastical, magical quality. Um, in addition to Fantini's music, one of the other inspirations for me was uh, Terry Riley's uh, uh, tape loop pieces from the 60s, but I also was thinking a bit of kind of a Sgt. Pepper's magical mystery tour kind of vibe. Um, Bob McGrath, the director, and I talked many times about trying to keep a very light touch in the piece. Uh, and it's, it's really, the piece is about transformation. That's what I really see it being about. And it's drawing a parallel between my re redefinition of the trumpet and Fantini's transformation of the trumpet. I hope it delights people and uh, that they experience some kind of magic. Uh, that's the whole idea of using all these different kinds of sensors and you know technologies where things can be the animations are being controlled by my performance. And then that it brings people to kind of reflect on this idea of how technology is transforming, not just music, but everything around us, but through the lens of this antique uh, character that we really don't know that much about. So we mentioned, I mentioned at the very beginning that you're on our faculty in music, um, in addition to having this dynamic career. And, and I'm wondering how this piece relates to your teaching and how did the students react to the performance when you did it for us in February? Well, these ideas about sampling, remixing, uh, you know, recontextualizing music, uh, th these are things that a lot of my courses uh, get into. Uh, I teach several production courses and uh, we, we do a lot of things with remixing and, and assignments where we explore particular uses of sampling. Music online, we do remixes and DJ cultures and other classes, uh, uh, capstone seminar, all these classes. Uh, I talk a lot about that just because you know, in the 35 years that I've been working in this field, sampling has just become more and more uh, a predominant vocabulary. In terms of the actual performance technologies in digital music performance, that's a course that I created. Uh, I started with a, uh, a like a club, just a, a, an activity 
for people to join to have a kind of ensemble to focus on performing and then we turned it into a class so that's a course where I get into uh, actually implementing some of the technologies that I use in my performance with the students uh, avant-garde and experimental music is another class that we look at that and we we do some performing of uh, you know, some of these classic avant-garde pieces so uh, yeah I mean it's I feel like it's pretty strongly uh, integrated into it. I try not to, you know, stand up and talk about my own work all the time because, you know, that that would get a little tiresome for the students, I think. Uh, but, uh, you know, the fact that I'm very active and I've remained, uh, you know, very busy and exploring all these different new uh, avenues, hopefully, I feel that's really necessary for the kind of program that we have, which is really focused on the contemporary side of music. Ben, I'm, I'm curious, have you ever collaborated or, is, you know, or a student done work with you before? I have, over the years, had faculty student research assistants. And Chris Stevenson was my faculty student research assistant for the Fantini piece. And he was uh, selected as our outstanding graduate in music this year. Uh, Stephanie DiCarlo and Esteban Robolino were my assistants for another opera, electronic opera I did called The Demo uh, around 2014-15. Uh, and as far as this piece, uh, I think some of the students, the feedback that I got was that they were really intrigued by some of the interactivity you know, I started doing these kind of more theatrical kinds of pieces when I started at Ramapo because up until that time, I was a touring musician. I, I was spending a lot more time on the road performing in clubs, and uh, obviously I wasn't able to do that anymore. So I kind of switched my creative output toward a, a, something that had a research component and then, you know, pieces that would take some time to develop. And the students that I've had as my research assistants have been yeah, extremely helpful in, in making these works actually come to life. So, Ben, how do you see this piece fitting in with the rest of your work um, and, and that you've produced over the years? For me, it was a very personal kind of parallel with what I'm trying to do with the trumpet. And perhaps somebody might say that it was presumptuous of me to compare myself with, with Fantini Obviously, yeah, he's a very important figure in the history of the instrument, but his, his attempts and his success at transforming the instrument from this thing that nobody ever thought could actually play music, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and then in trying to mirror that with what I've been trying to do, which is to put the trumpet, the acoustic trumpet into dialogue into this kind of interactivity with all these virtual tools. I was very inspired by that and I feel like in some ways it it kind of it's almost like an overview of my approach in terms of being a composer performer and you know all the effort that I've put into uh, developing this new way of, of performing and creating. Thanks again to Ben Neal for joining us today. Look for future conversations coming to our new Bringing Home Berry series. Thanks for watching. Ah,